Tonight's commencement speaker marks the midpoint of our 2013-2014 academic year in which we are focusing on the theme spirit and story, walking it out. It's been a meaningful fall semester as our community has reflected on what it means to walk and live in a way that takes seriously the renewing and empowering spirit of the living God. Our speaker this evening represents our year's theme so well, daily living out what it means to follow Jesus, walking in the spirit, Embracing the reality of God's presence every day, this is his story. As a boy, our commencement speaker had a dream. He dreamed about a church that would never close. A church that stayed open 24-7, 365 days a year. A church that would serve the inner city's physical and spiritual needs, bringing a message of hope to the seemingly hopeless. For Pastor Matthew Barnett, that dream came true, and it's called, appropriately, the Dream Center. In the early 1990s, Matthew and his father, Tommy, started the Dream Center as a typical local church. Inspired by Matthew's vision and desire to impact the entire city, the church grew from 39 members, learned later to like about 12 members, and then up to ten, uh, tens of thousands of people each week in the center's multiple services and 273 ministries and outreaches today, a bright light in the city of angels. Located in the heart of Los Angeles at the former Queen of Angels Hospital. The Dream Center nonprofit, George W. Bush once called a model for faith-based organizations, rescues people from addictions, homelessness, and abuse, rehabilit rehabilitating them for the glory of God. Reaching out to gang members, unwed mothers, emancipated youth, as well as feeding the hungry and needy, the Dream Center gives people hope and an opportunity to dream again. Their ministry, Project Hope, actively seeks out victims of human trafficking, girls who are prostituting on the streets of Los Angeles. Project Hope's staff develop relationships with these girls and offer the only emergency shelter that is specifically for trafficking victims in Los Angeles with the long-term goal of restoring their fractured lives, offering case management to meet their mental, medical, legal, and emotional needs started as a literal dream for Matthew Barnett, has turned into an international movement, making dreams come true for many in need, bringing the love of Christ, the love of Christ and the light of Christ to the least of these in our own backyard and across the world. This afternoon, we were joined by some of Matthew Barnett's colleagues, and we're glad that they were here. Tonight, I want to say that in addition to his work at the Dream Center, Path Pastor Matthew is the author of the best-selling book, The Cause Within You, and serves as senior pastor of the historic Angelus Temple, the birthplace of the Foursquare denomination founded in 1923. In 2001, Pastor Matthew united the Dream Center and the Angelus Temple, which had at that time dwindled to a congregation of just a few dozen people. And after a major renovation of the historic church that has seen great growth in the last decade, with hundreds coming to Christ, and an army of servants are getting equipped to impact the world for the Lord. Pastor Matthew, who has been honored with numerous awards, including the Religious Heritage Award in 1999, is a kingdom visionary. He is a testimony to God's faithfulness to those who dare to dream, and he's a devoted family man to your wife, Caroline, your two precious children. When he was just 20, Matthew dared to dream about a church that never closed. At a time when most churches were fleeing the inner city, he dreamed of a church in the very heart of the city. As it were, a 24-hour hospital for the spiritually, emotionally, and physically suffering. He dreamed of a place where a heroin addict could ring the doorbell at 3 a.m. and be welcomed in and put on the path to recovery. He dreamed of a place where the hungry could come in the middle of the night and find food. If the strip clubs and bars are open all night long just down the street, thought Pastor Matthew, the church could be too. Matthew Barnett's work at the Dream Center is no mere short-term venture into the inner city. It is a safe, stable, sustainable, Christian, Christ-centered community to the urban core. It's a place with roots. It's a place we're proud to be associated with through many of our faculty, students, administrators, initiative. It's a place that's been investing in the city for a long time and gaining attention not for its sake but for Christ's sake. Plans for the long-term flourishing of the city are so much found in the Dream Center. It's an example to all of us of a sacrificial hands in the dirt, Jesus-like commitment to seek and serve the lost. And I believe there are Biola students here tonight, not only been part of the Dream Center, but who have big dreams 
like Matthew had. And I believe that as you go from this place, you'll be inspired by his story to believe that your gospel-driven, Christ-centered, biblically-rooted dreams can indeed become a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our commencement speaker, Pastor Matthew Barnett. I'm going to record that and play that when I get discouraged sometime. Wow. This is the greatest honor of my life in 20 years. I mean that to be able to speak to doers of the word, students who have invested time into the community, who relentlessly have invested into the world of the Dream Center, into the city and many other great organizations around L.A., there's a reason why this organization and this Biola has been around for over 100 years. Because he who lends to the poor lends to God, and he will repay. And God is repaying this unbelievable university with great success because of their love and their hurting and their mission that has never stopped, but it has only multiplied through the staff and the kindness and the caring and the tenacity of the students to serve the hurting, and that's why this place has become a beacon of hope to the world. And I'm just so blessed to be a part of it. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak here. You get a lot of great speakers in the commencement, obviously. And I will not be the best speaker, but there's one thing I will be. I will be the most grateful speaker that you've ever had. And I'm so honored to be associated that you guys let me wear the sweatshirt even, all right? I cannot wear the honor of many of these great uh, teachers, but I can wear the sweatshirt, all right? So that's pretty cool, all right. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. I'm going to speak to you just briefly about the greatest title of them all. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and 6, 12 words that changed my life. Listen carefully. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Here it is, right here. Here's the secret of life. In all thy ways acknowledge him, draw a line, and he shall direct thy path. Those words changed my life. When I was 20 years of age, I came into the inner city of Los Angeles to pastor a church next to a liquor store that nobody could find. I just got started, and my dad was trying to find a real pastor. He couldn't find one, so he asked me, his son, to come and pastor the church for three months. When I was there, I mean, I was very interesting. I was the only Caucasian in my neighborhood, and I was so skinny back then that when I stuck out my tongue, I looked like a zipper. And everybody thought I was a kid from the Home Alone movie when I first started pastoring my church. And I was 20 years of age. I was scared of my own shadow. And uh, here I was in the neighborhood trying to pastor my church. We went from 39 the first week down to less than 12 people the week, before, the week after that. We were having revival in reverse. That's what was happening. And one night I went to my church on a Sunday night, and I looked out, and not one person showed up. I mean, not even one. I had a buffet and everything, and not one person showed up. Yes, I know. And I got so discouraged. I went to my apartment in downtown L.A. I said, God, I'm the biggest failure in all the world. The anointing is on my grandfather, first megachurch pastor. My father, Tommy Barnett, 10,000, first to reach 10,000. And God, I'm a big old failure. And I began to cry for about three hours on my pillow. And after weeping for about three hours, God spoke a word to me. He said, I want you to stop your crying. I want you to get up, and I want you to go to Echo Park. Now, for God to tell you to go to Echo Park in the middle of the night in the 1990s is a pretty bold word. I mean, they found bodies and guns and everything in the bottom of the lake. I thought God was mad at me for being a big old baby. He was just going to finish me off in a drive-by shooting and get somebody there who really could do the job. And that night, I had a broken dream. It's never over. It's never over. You might think that your dream has reached rock bottom. Can I tell you that when you feel like your dream has gone to rock bottom, God doesn't destroy dreams in rock bottom. He recreates dreams in rock bottom. It was that night I walked around my city. I saw young men up against police cars being arrested. I saw helicopters that were looking for criminals in the park. I saw homeless people everywhere. And that night God spoke a word to me that liberated my life. I no longer felt the anxiety and the pressure of having to be successful, of having to have this great title of being a success because my father was. That night I was liberated from the pain and the ulcers and the fear of not measuring up. And that night, God spoke a simple word to me. He said, I want you to stop trying to live for success. And I want you to spend the rest of your life blessing people in this community. I want you to die to the dream of being a success and live the rest of your life to be a a blessing and building the dreams of those young boys up against police cars being arrested. It was that night I I died to my dream and I lived for something better than my dream. I lived to God's cause. And I realized I didn't have the plan, but I could serve. 
I can make a difference. I said, God, whatever you choose to put in my hand, I'm just going to start using it with joy and with love and just build it with whatever you put in my hand. And God didn't speak to me. He said, you have no staff. I had nobody, but you have a desk. I want the ministry to start with a desk. So I took the desk and I moved it outside my office. I moved on the sidewalk. And every day, as all the mamas in the neighborhood would walk by, I'd sit there with a jar of candy and a desk and a phone, and I would answer my phone on the sidewalk by the church, and they would call, and I would answer the phone. They would say, hello. Um, I would answer the phone. I would say, hello, LA Dream Center. May I help you? And they'd say, yes. Uh, do you guys have a women's ministry? I said, I think we just started one right now. Let me transfer the button. And I changed my voice and made it sound like we had a women's ministry. <laughs> How many of you know when God gives you a dream, you got to act like you're there, even though you're not there yet, you know? And... Uh, and there it was. And then the next day, all I said was, God, I want to serve. Whatever you choose to put in my hand, I want to serve. I want to forget about my five-year plan. Forget about all the things I think I had accomplished in the next five years. In all my ways, I just want to acknowledge you and you direct my path. And when you pray prayers of serving, God will often direct your path in the way that you never dreamed possible. And the very next day, I got a little apartment. Some lady called, said, I got a little unit. Can you use it? And that was the day I started my first drug and alcohol rehab program. I'll never forget taking two guys in the neighborhood that were former gang members walking in. And uh, I said, okay, guys, today rehab starts. They said, what's a program? I'm like, I don't know. Just come to church and read your Bible every single day. You know, you got to start somewhere. And, uh, and I realized that I, couldn't be, I couldn't be relevant to the neighborhood. I didn't understand the pain, I didn't understand the plight, and nor did I try to be relevant because God really didn't want me to be relevant in the neighborhood. No, nearly does he want any of us to really try to be relevant. He wants us to be greater than relevant. He wants us to be revolutionary in the field that God has given us by which to serve. And dying to the dream of success and living to the dream of being a blessing. And all of a sudden, two, three, four, five, 14 homes, and I realized that falling in love with serving opens the door to visions that you never could have had on your best case scenario, on your best case plan, on your wall. Living to serve your generation will open up doors that you never could have possibly have, striving for success. That's why Paul didn't want a minister to strive. He just wanted us to serve and acknowledge him and let God direct our path. And one day I was driving down the Hollywood freeway. I said, God, I need a building. We outgrew the neighborhood. I'm 23 years of age. I looked to my right. I see the biggest hospital I'd ever seen in my life on the Hollywood freeway. 400,000 square foot for sale. I pulled over to the side. And uh, as I pulled in there, I saw all these actors filming a movie right there. They were going to buy it. Uh, there's some movie studios were going to purchase a hospital. And when I walked in, I saw Brad Pitt and I saw George Clooney filming the movie right there on set. And I walked right up to Brad Pitt because I'm not scared or intimidated by actors. I'm intimidated by your, pre your president, but I'm not intimidated by actors, you know. And I walked right up to Brad Pitt, and uh, I said, Brad Pitt, how you doing, man? I love your movies. It's great to see you. And he kind of looked at me for a second, and back then we had free uh, Christian airtime that was on for about 10 years that was donated to help us start our church. We were on Friday nights at 10 o'clock. And Brad Pitt stopped. He looked at me. He said, wait a second. He said, I know who you are. He said, you're Matthew Barnett, aren't you, from the Dream Center? No, he didn't say that. I'm just messing with him. I, I'm sorry. I'm not. No, I yeah, didn't. He didn't do that yet. He used my head as an ashtray for his cigarettes. But I, I, and I walked in there and I said, I want to buy this building at 23. How much is it? They laughed. They said, well, the building is going to go on sale for $16 million. I said, I don't have $16 million, but I have a dream. They weren't impressed. They kicked me out of the building because they didn't think I was serious about buying the building. You'll say, what did you do? Well, I found myself a back door when nobody was looking. And I looked to my left and I looked to my right. I looked at the security guard. And I snuck in the building and gave myself a tour of the building anyways. How many here know when God gives you a dream, you got to go gangster for Jesus sometimes. You know, you just got to do it, you know. As I was walking through that building illegally with one eye on Jesus and one eye on the security guard that was trying to arrest me. That's why the Bible says watch and pray. You got to get a dream and run from the cops, you know. And as I got to the roof, God spoke to me. He said, I want you to build a 24-hour church in a 24-hour city. And that was the day where God began to show me Hollywood in downtown. And you see, when you just start using what God puts in your hand to serve, and you have no agenda except to make a difference, one day you'll wake up and you'll realize that God's dream is bigger than anything you could ever put on paper. The cause of Christ is always bigger than man's greatest expectations. So I want to encourage you in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Twelve words. Stand on the right side of the dream. Live addicted to the greatest title of them all. 
the title of a servant. Because we live in a city that's in love with titles. We live in a city that, that longs for titles. We live in a city where people come to the city to, to find a title, actor. And there's nothing wrong with titles. As a matter of fact, you're going to receive a pretty awesome, powerful title today as graduate of Biola University. But can I tell you that there is even a title that's even greater than that. The title of a servant. The Bible says of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in Acts chapter 2 that he went about doing good. The one sentence autobiography of the life of Jesus was a man who went about doing good. And wouldn't it be great if people couldn't put our religion into a box? They can't maybe understand everything about us, but they look at us and say, those are the people that are going about doing good. Those are the people that use their influence to serve, who live under the greatest title of them all. I close with this. Sometimes I close five or six times in the sermon. <laughs> one time I opened the sermon by closing, but this is a real one, so you can put your shoes on right now, ladies. This is a great crowd. I love you guys. <laughs> one day I was driving down the Hollywood Freeway. I closed with this. I was driving down the 101. It's number two. Uh, and I, as I drove off the 101 Freeway, there was a man living under a bridge for 17 years. Every day I tried to reach him. Since the moment I came to L.A., I tried to give him money, thinking maybe that would help him. I offered him food, thinking that would help. And, and he never would accept my love. He just lived under a bridge for 17 years. Every day, the same thing, living under the bridge, and I hadn't been able to reach him. And one day, to be honest with you, I started kind of giving up that I could reach him when one of the young girls that came to the Dream Center on a missions trip who graduated high school decided that she wanted to minister to the man and said, Pastor, there's a man I noticed who lived under the bridge. I want to go minister to him. I'm like, well, good luck. You know, I'm the great man of power and faith, and if I can't reach him, I don't know how you can. Just a high school graduate just entering into college decided to have enough audacity to go under the bridge. She said, well, I'm going, Pastor. And I said, well, praise the Lord. Go for it, you know. Because I've learned in ministry, when you don't know what to say, just say praise the Lord. And uh, she went under the bridge, and she found the man, grabbed him by the hand, said, sir, you're coming to get a meal at the Dream Center. He said, no, I'm not. She said, yes, you are. He said, no, I'm not. She said, yes, you are. And she grabbed him by the hand and pulled him to the Dream Center to get a meal. I couldn't believe when I saw him come up there. And I said, how did you get this man to come here? She said, well, pastor, the Bible says to compel them to come, <laughs> which means to physically force them to come. And so I said, good enough for me, you know. And uh, she was standing in line. He got his food, said, thank you very much. He went under the bridge, said, thank you very much, went under the bridge. He did this every single day. He just received the food, and he didn't want to change. All he did was one free food, and every day he did the same thing. And then I got real spiritual. I started saying things like, well, God, this man doesn't want to change. He's just using us, and he's just, we're not being a good steward of our resources by giving it to a man that doesn't want to change. But every day he just kept using us, getting free food, and then God began to speak to my heart. And God spoke to me and said, if you want to be a bridge of hope to the world, you've got to allow yourself to be walked on. And every day he was using us. And one day he came up to me and said, Pastor, I want to go into your rehab program. After 17 years of living under a bridge, locked in an attic as a child, literally tortured as a child, and that's why he was living under the bridge. He said, I want to go into your rehab program at 60 years of age. Now look, folks, our rehab program is not like the ones in Malibu with the spa and the massages and all that. I mean, our rehab program is beans and rice and Jesus Christ, you know, and uh, he wanted to come in the program at 60 years of age. I said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> and he came in the program at 60 years of age. He graduated our recovery program after one year. He went to Bible school. He graduated Bible school, and homeless Barry, who was living under the bridge, is now Pastor Barry. He is working with us every single day, serving God and living for the glory of God. And his life is being changed. Here, you have a picture of Barry? From homeless Barry to Pastor Barry. There he is right there from living under the bridge. Why? All because of a high school graduate who suddenly was entering a college who felt that there was a great cause within her life. I want to tell you, open doors happen when you serve. Live your life. Give your life away. You never know what you're going to find. You never know what you're going to inspire. And you go forth and you carry the responsibility that comes with great privilege. And the greater the title, the greater the responsibility to serve your generation for the glory of God. Go for it. Graduates, we're proud of you. We love you. We can't wait to see what's going to happen in your life as you live out the greatest title of them all, the title of a servant. God bless you all, and thank you for letting me share today. Thank you so much.
Thank you, my brother. Pastor Matthew Barnett, you stirred our souls, and we'll not forget what you have said to us tonight. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.